My name's Sophia and welcome to Go Soli. Today I thought we could cozy up together, make some funky throw pillows, and test out your skills on sewing circles and stars. So join me and at the end of this project you should have two beautiful huggable throw pillows perfect for the season. To make our moon we're going to start with a sheet of paper folding it in half. You want your piece of paper to be as tall as you want your shape to be. So if you want a moon that's 18 inches tall, you'd choose an 18 inch paper and then you're going to fold it in half again so you have it in quarters. Next, take your ruler and measure half of the height of your moon. In my case, half the height was 8.5 inches. Mark it on the top of your paper and then again on the side. And then make a few points in the middle measuring from the center. I like to use an Expo marker because they are very pigmented but they tend not to bleed through a lot of paper. Okay so the fun part is connecting all of the dots and once you have them connected you can start cutting it out to form your circle. Get those scraps out of the way. Unfold your circle. Make any adjustments if you need to. And then cut out a second circle. And we're going to be layering these in order to cut out our moon shape. Of course, if you want a round moon, by all means, go for it. But right here, I'm layering one circle on top of the other. As you can see, I'm pushing the top layer a little bit higher up and over to the right because you want your crescent moon to have a bit of a longer bottom and a shorter top because if you notice the moon kind of leans back a little bit. If it helps to know, the center of my moon ended up being about six and a half inches wide. Now that we have our moon shape, we can put it on top of our fabric and start to trace around. And this is really your time to decide if you want to add some seam allowance or not. I tend to trace around my shape and then cut around about a centimeter from that line just to give myself a little bit of seam allowance. And it's also a good opportunity to make any adjustments if you need to. One thing to know is you're going to end up with some fabric scraps and that's okay. You can always shred them and use them with your polyfill to stuff the project or to use any bigger pieces for smaller scrap busting ideas. The last step before sewing is to mark a space about the width of your hand that you won't sew so that you can stuff your project. Start sewing at one of these points. Remember to back stitch. And you can see how I traced out the shape of my moon but left a centimeter of seam allowance around and I'm just following the shape as I go and when I reach a corner I stop with the needle inserted, I pivot, and then I continue to sew around the curve. That's why I think this is a really good project for beginner sewers because it helps you learn how to sew around your curves and then pivot at the corners. All right, and then I'm coming to the end here. That's my last marker, back stitching, and we're good. Now that you have your shape sewn, the next step is to trim off the excess fabric at the corners. This will allow you to get a nice clean corner when you turn it right side out, and then continue clipping all around. This gives the fabric a little bit more stretch and flexibility so that it can accommodate these curved shapes. Once you have that done, we can start turning it around. Use a crochet hook or a pencil with an eraser at the end to start poking out the corners. Be gentle with it, sometimes it takes a little bit of time to shimmy through. And now that we have our moon shape, we're going to move on to drafting the star. I'm going to show you an even better way to do this in a minute. But for this star, I started with five points on a circle in the same shape as our moon. And I connected them kind of the same way we do it in school. It was a way for me to try out a funky pillow rather than something completely symmetrical. So if you're good with good enough, 
then this would be the option for you. But like I said, I'll show you an even better method in just a second. One of the joys of making these throw pillows, I think, is that you can kind of do what you want and it's a really nice way to use up any leftover fabric from other projects. In this case, I'm using up scraps from redoing my sofa. Okay, so not too far off, but you see what I'm getting at here. Treasury is a YouTuber who makes wonderful craft videos and her templates are free and they're really useful. So I would highly recommend checking out her YouTube channel, which helped inspire the star shaped throw pillow. Back to my funky star. So I'm just going to add some curves to any pointed edges. I'm not too concerned about the moon because of its general shape, but with the star, having so many pointy edges could be a little bit precarious. So I'm rounding out those corners to give them nice, soft edges. And the next step is to trace around. Here you can add your seam allowances or make adjustments. I like to trace around, making my adjustments, and then I'll cut the shape out with about a centimeter around. Mark where your hand is going to go, and then sew around the rest. Once again, I'm going to start at my point, backstitch, go to my corner, pivot, and start working my way around. I'm really just following the shape that I've cut out here. This is a really good exercise for beginners. It'll help you gain some confidence in navigating corners and working around curved shapes. Let me know if you end up trying this out for yourself or if you've tried sewing any other funky throw pillow shapes. I think these make excellent gifts and what's really cool about them too is that you can make them in pretty much any size you want so you can get really creative with it. When you reach the end, remember to backstitch and then we're ready for the next step. We're going to clip around the corners again turn it out, and then use your crochet hook or whatever object you have and start to poke out the corners the same as we did with the moon. When you're done with this step, start stuffing each of your shapes using a little bit of stuffing at a time. This will help make sure you get a nice even fill. And your last step is to stitch it closed. I like to use an invisible stitch. You can use a whip stitch as well, whatever works for you. The invisible stitch to me creates a very clean finish where you won't see the thread at the end. And sorry about the camera angle here, but here's a bit of more of a close up of how that's done. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey and I wish you all the best in making your funky throw pillows. I hope that you can try out some new shapes as well and get creative with it. So enjoy and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.